Hi everyone and welcome to module six, lesson two. We're gonna talk about percent composition, empirical and molecular formula, and then we're gonna talk about hydrates, which are found the same way as an empirical molecular formula. So it's pretty simple. So first off, percent composition, uh, the relative amounts of the elements in a compound are expressed as a percent composition. Um, so it's just the mass of the element you're looking for divided by the mass of the compound multiplied by 100, pretty simple. So uh, this first question, when a 13.60 gram sample of a compound containing only magnesium and oxygen is decomposed, 5.40 grams of oxygen is contained, obtained. What is the percent composition of this compound? Okay, so I know 5.40 grams is oxygen. I know 13.60 grams is the whole thing. How much magnesium is it? Well, that's simple. It's just 13.60 grams minus 5.40 grams. And that will give me a total of 8.20 grams of magnesium. So this is magnesium plus oxygen. That's just oxygen. So the rest would just be magnesium. Okay, so for the percent that is going to be, let's do magnesium. That's gonna be equal to the mass of the magnesium divided by the total mass, which was given to us, multiplied by 100, um, which turns it into a percentage, and that's going to be 60.3%. You should try to keep sig figs. Um, so I did 8.2 has three sig figs, so I'm gonna have three sig figs here. Remember, multiplying it by 100 does not count for sig figs. And then percent that's oxygen is going to be the mass of the oxygen divided by the total mass, multiplied by 100, and that will give you 39.7%. Simple. So how about the next one? What's the percent composition of each element in sodium hydrogen carbonate? So sodium hydrogen carbonate looks like that, also known as baking soda. So the easiest way I like to do this, I'm gonna show you one and then I'm gonna ask you to do the other ones yourself. And of course the answers are in the completed notes. So you can go and check your answers. So what I like to do is I like to do the molar mass. Um, and so I'm gonna do Na is 22.99, hydrogen 1.0079, carbon 12.01. And I like to do them individually so I know that what they are. So it makes my math easy for the percent compositions because um, everything's just laid out for you. And then oxygen, 15.999 times three gives me 47.997. So that's the one you'll use for oxygen. And we have sodium, hydrogen, carbon. The total, if you see mm, that means molar mass, 84.00 grams per mole. So I'll just do the sodium and then ask you to do the other ones. The percent that sodium is going to be 22.99 divided by 84.00 multiplied by 100, and you're going to get 27.37% sodium. So just pause, um, do hydrogen, carbon, and oxygen. Go check your answers. It's very simple stuff here. That's easy, that's the easy one to do. The next one, I feel still simple. It just has more steps to it. So the empirical formula shows the smallest whole number ratio of elements in a compound. Um, like I said, there are certain steps that we are going to follow in order to determine the empirical formula. So here's the question. So we have a percent composition of a certain compound. It's found to be 40% carbon, 6.72% hydrogen, 53.92% oxygen. Step one, we're gonna assume that 100% is equal to 100 grams uh, so that I can start with grams. Sometimes you'll be given grams to start with and then you don't have to worry about step one, but I'm gonna assume, uh, whoops, this is not a pen, stop doing that, that 100% uh, is equal to 100 grams. So that's gonna be 40 G carbon. That's going to be, um, 6.72 grams hydrogen, 53.92 grams oxygen. And it's just, oh, it's just H because this is within a compound. 
Step two, convert those into moles. Take your grams, turn them into moles. Um, just go out a few, okay, so when you're doing empirical and molecular formulas, go out a few decimal places. Um, it doesn't matter for our sig figs in this, but the more decimal places, the better your answer is going to be, so please keep that in mind. For hy uh, hydrogen, it's going to be 6.67 moles. Oxygen. gives me 3.37 moles. Uh, step three, divide by the lowest number. So look at each of your number of moles and divide by the lowest. So that's gonna be 3.33. So take each one and divide by 3.33. 3.33 divided by 3.33, uh, carbon will equal one. 6.67 divided by 3.33, hydrogen will give me two. And the oxygen, 3.37 divided by 3.33, is gonna be so close to one that the rounding isn't gonna affect my answer at all. And so we can just round it up to one. It's like not a big jump to do that. And so those are the subscripts for your compound. And so my empirical formula is gonna be C, H2, Oh, and that's my answer for this one. Now here it says, if it's not a whole number, you need a multiplier and you cannot just round. For example, if I had C was one, H was two, and oxygen was 1.5, I can't just round that to two. That changes my answer way too much. So I need a multiplier. What I'd end up having to do is take everything and multiply it by two so I could have a whole number. So that would give me C2, H4O3, and that would be my empirical formula. So if you have something with uh, 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 0 0.33, um, 0.75, those things are gonna need multipliers. You're not gonna want to round from 1.25 down to one, that'll change your answer too much. And that's how you find an empirical formula. Step one, assume 100% is 100 grams. Step two, take grams, turn them into moles. Step three, divide by the lowest number of moles. I guess a step four would be write what you have. Those are your subscripts, that's your formula. And then your caveat would be, if it's not a whole number, you need a multiplier. Okay, the molecular formula is the actual formula. Okay, so the empirical formula is the lowest whole number ratio. The molecular formula is what the actual formula is. So in order to determine the molecular formula, you need a mass and you need an empirical formula. So this question says CH2O, which is what we just found, was the empirical formula. Its molecular mass is 180 grams. We wanna find the molecular formula. So step one, determine the molar mass of the empirical formula. So C, let's do it again. CH2O, the molar mass, 30.02 grams per mole. So what we do is we take the molecular mass, so the mass that we were given, the mass of the compound, and divide it by the mass of the empirical formula. And that, again, is going to be so close to the number six, we don't have to worry about rounding. And then we just multiply our empirical, the, this number that we get throughout the empirical formula so my molecular formula is C6H12O6. That's it. Nothing crazy there. So let's do some more. <clears throat> Excuse me. Determine the empirical formula for the following percent compositions. We're only gonna do the first one. We're not going to do the second one. You can feel free to do it yourself. Again, these steps are all the same. So step one, take your percentages and assume that they are grams. 100% is equal to 100 grams. Okay, take your grams, turn them into moles. One mole of chromium, 52.0 grams. 
that gives me 0.817 moles. Chlorine, 35.45 grams is one mole, which gives me 1.62 moles. Then we're gonna divide by the lowest number, which is 0.817, that'll give me one. That'll give me two. And then all we have to do, those are our subscripts. So it's gonna be CrCl2. There's my empirical formula. Excuse me. Okay, so number, uh, now we're gonna do this one right here. Determine the molecular formula for ethylene glycol. The empirical formula is CH3O and the molecular mass is 62. First thing we want to do is determine the molar mass of CH3O, which is 31.03 grams per mole. Again, if you want to pause this video, do this math yourself, please feel free. If you don't remember how to do molar mass, we talked about it in the last unit, um, and I'm sorry, in the last video. But that was, I believe, module two. Then we're going to take our mass of the molecule divided by the mass of our empirical formula, and that's gonna be so close to two, we don't even have to worry. We multiply that throughout our empirical formula and our molecular formula is C2H6O2. Here's a good way to tell if it's an empirical formula or a molecular formula. Empirical formula cannot be reduced. CrCl2, I can't reduce that down. Molecular formulas reduce down to your empirical formula. So if you can reduce something, that is a molecular formula. If you cannot reduce it, it is an empirical formula. Sometimes the two are the same, but not always. Okay, last thing here, and that's going to be talking about a hydrate. A hydrate is a compound that has a specific number of water molecules within their crystal lattice structure. So we talked about ionic compounds have a crystal lattice structure, a set 3D pattern. Well, within hydrates, in between the spaces between those ions, you can water molecules fit, okay? And that would be referred to as a hydrate. Different compounds can hold different amounts of water. An anhydrous compound is a compound where it used to be a hydrate, but we've driven off all the water. So we heated it up and all of the water has escaped. And now we have just the anhydrous, the compound by itself. To name a hydrate, you simply name the ionic compound that you would normally. Okay, so for example, CuSO4, we should know is copper two sulfate. Okay. Uh, Na2CO3 is sodium carbonate. Then for the water, what we do is we just include the prefix and add the word hydrate. So there are going to be five H2Os. So that would be penta, that's five, and then you just add the word hydrate. So it's copper two sulfate pentahydrate, sodium carbonate decahydrate. Okay, and then the last problem for this set of notes. What is the hydrate formula of barium chloride when it weighs five grams before heating and 4.26 grams afterward? And like I told you earlier, it's found in a very similar way to the empirical formulas. So first off, if I know I have this much before and this much after, what is the difference? Um, so that's going to be 5.00 minus 4.26, which gives me 0 0.74 grams. What is that? That's the water that's been driven off, okay? That's the water. So now what we do is we take the mass of the anhydrous, barium chloride, the mass of the water, And then we follow our steps for an empirical formula. Uh, turn the grams into moles. It's 
it gives me 0 0.0205 moles. It gives me 0 0.0411 moles. Divide by the lowest number. When you're doing an empirical formula, the lowest number should always be the compound and not the water. You're always going to have one of the compound to one or more water molecules. Please keep that in mind. That's one. That's so close to two. That my formula, I'm gonna write it over to the side is going to be the compound BACL2 dot 2H2O because um, there was two H2Os, one of the compound. And so we would call that barium chloride dihydrate. All right, so very similar to finding the empirical formula. Okay, so that's it for this lesson. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the chat or you can ask them at the end of class. Um, you can go ahead uh, and work on your homework. Let me know if you have any problems. I'll see you next time.